Stoicism is an ancient school of philosophy that stresses virtue, self-discipline, and looking to the contemplative life to find happiness. Originally founded by a philosopher called Zeno, it is most exemplified by philosophers like Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius. It is also a philosophy that has endured through the ages. Originally from ancient Greece, it made its way to Rome hundreds of years later, and it has endured to the present age. Recently, writers like Ryan Holiday or Massimo Pigliucci or Donald Robertson have popularized Stoicism, writing several books about it that have sold quite well. People seem to be drawn to Stoicism because in a world that can often feel meaningless, it offers a path to a better life. It is an escape from the drudgery of modernity, and it tells you to work hard and pursue excellence and virtue. Now, I actually would not call myself a Stoic, though I am someone who is inspired by the Stoics, I've studied the Stoics, and I've tried to incorporate some of their practices into my life. And I wanted to share those with you today. So this is a little guide on how you can be a Stoic. So first, we're gonna talk about some of the books that we wanna read, and then we're gonna talk about some Stoic practices that you could implement in your own life. There are three categories of text that you might want to dive into if you are studying Stoicism. First, we have the primary text, the writings of the Stoics. Perhaps the most popular example of this is the Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, which I've talked a little bit about on this channel. I highly recommend this as a first step into Stoicism. The Meditations are Marcus's journals, and so they have a kind of raw, personal feel, which can be especially helpful if you haven't read a lot of philosophy in the past. But I don't think you should just read the Meditations. You should also be looking at works by Seneca, or uh, the Roman orator uh, Cicero, who was influenced by Stoicism. And the person that I have probably been the most inspired by is actually Epictetus. I'm going to put links down in the description to any book that I mention here, by the way, so that you can find the editions that I recommend. There's also a good deal of scholarly work that has been done on Stoicism. If you're interested at all in that, in learning more about the Stoic worldview and going really into the details, I would recommend you start by going to the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy's article on Stoicism. The Stanford Encyclopedia is an incredible free online resource where you can learn about philosophy. The Stoicism article is very good and has a great bibliography. So you can just start to dive into other works um, by looking through that bibliography and seeing what sort of catches your interest. And finally, there are some popular introductions. I mentioned some of the authors in the intro to this video, but Ryan Holiday would be one of them. Uh, you could read some of his works, but uh, the, the work I would probably recommend the most is Massimo Pigliucci's book, How to Be a Stoic. That book is very accessible. It's written by a philosopher and scientist. Pigliucci is both. Um, and I, I found it to be just very thoughtful. And it gives you some practical ways that you can incorporate Stoicism into your own life. It might also be helpful for you to get a grounding in other Greek and Roman philosophy. There are some volumes on Hellenistic philosophy that I highly recommend. Again, I'm going to put those down in the description. But if you've decided that you're interested enough in Stoicism that you just want to give it a shot and see what it's like, let me recommend you seven practices that you could implement pretty quickly. These practices all sound pretty easy, but to keep them up consistently can be quite difficult. I would just say accept that you can fail and just keep on trying to do better. This is the beginning of a journey. It's not as if you need to be perfect when you start. So the first practice you can do is just to read the Stoics. Now, I would actually recommend though that you read these contemplatively. So put down the pencil for a while, don't take any notes, and instead try to read these slowly and thoughtfully. Here's a method that I really like to try when I'm diving into a text that I want to engage with in this way. I pick a small portion, maybe a page, maybe sometimes even just a paragraph, and I read it. Then I try and think and reflect on it, maybe for five minutes. I'm asking difficult questions about the text. I'm considering the complexities. What didn't I understand? What do I definitely agree with? Then I go back and read that passage again. I can repeat this process several times if I feel like it. I would say at minimum, you should read it twice. Sometimes you might read it three to five times. What you're going to find is that as you think and reflect and contemplate on stoic principles or on these teachings, the text will seem to change in front of you. You'll be able to find new things. You'll be able to spot nuances and complexities, or you're just going to realize that you completely misread it the first time. This is a very powerful realization as a reader. And so I think you'll really get something out of this. The second practice that I recommend is to keep a journal. Now, I've made a couple of videos about journaling. I'm a big fan and an advocate for it, but it is a particularly stoic practice as well. 
Marcus Aurelius, as I've mentioned before, all of his writings that we have, they are his personal journals. So journaling in any way can help you on your path to stoicism, but you might want to try modeling some of your journaling actually from Marcus himself. There are two ways that I think are really helpful. One is that Marcus sometimes uses his journal to reflect on where he is failing or to remind himself of the principles that he's chosen to live by. So he will be issuing commands and directives for himself, uh, new rules for life, you might say. And that can be a very powerful journaling practice. But a second thing that I would recommend is starting your journal in the same way that Marcus starts the meditations, which is in a, from a place of gratitude. Marcus actually begins by listing all of the things that he is grateful for, all of the things that fate has given him and yet he does not deserve. Since part of Stoicism is learning to love what fate gives you, this is a very powerful practice. My third recommendation is that you should regularly remind yourself that one day you will die. This is sometimes known as the concept of memento mori. Now, the reason that I say that you should remind yourself that you will die is that Stoics often use the fact of death and the frailty of life as a source of motivation to achieve the things that they think are worth doing. In the Stoics case, that means cultivating virtue and acting rightly. Some of us think about the fact that we will die and it's a cause for distress and depression. And that's an understandable thought, but the Stoics try to transform this into a call to action. Fourth, you should learn to accept what you can't control. Stoics make a sharp distinction between what is in their capacity to influence and control and what isn't. And one of the fundamental tenets of Stoicism is that your happiness is dependent on the things that you can control. In particular, your ability to be virtuous, to act in accordance with human nature, to act rightly. Everything else which is out of your control, we have to teach ourselves and learn how not to make our happiness dependent on that. There are a variety of methods that you might try to employ to do this. Here, I suggest that you just start reading Marcus Aurelius and you just start reading Epictetus and see what they suggest. Marcus Aurelius, for instance, will often talk about how there is some larger rational structure to the world. And all of these things which seem to bring us misery are in fact part of this larger rational structure. For some people, this is a very comforting thought. Maybe that's not quite what works for you, and so I would suggest just reading around in Stoicism and seeing what you can find. Fifth is that you should always treat people with kindness. Stoics believe that all people should be virtuous. All people should try to act rightly, but we have to acknowledge that not all people will do so. When you wake up every day, you are going to encounter people who will mistreat you. In his journals, Marcus writes, at the start of the day, tell yourself, I shall meet people who are officious, ungrateful, abusive, treacherous, malicious, and selfish. In every case, they have got like this because of their ignorance of good and bad. People act wrongly, we can't deny that fact. But we can control how we choose to respond and how we choose to view those people who mistreat us. And Marcus Aurelius says that we should respond with sympathy because they have forgotten what good and bad are. They have forgotten who they are. And their selfishness, their maliciousness, their politicking or backstabbing does not give us license to act cruelly as well. Sixth, you should try to practice self-denial or to embrace what some Stoics have called voluntary discomfort. The idea is that temporarily or perhaps on some kind of regular cadence, you are denying yourself certain pleasures. You are not doing the things that you want to do. You might push yourself to exercise more, or you might take cold showers or fast from certain foods. You are doing something that is training yourself, your body, your will to not need all of those external pleasures in order to be happy. The Stoics have this conception of the passions. These are our emotions and our urges. And following with a lot of classical philosophy, the idea is that the passions can actually overtake us, that we can actually be controlled by our passions. But the Stoic formula is to say, no, I will not be controlled by my passions. I will control them. By practicing self-denial or embracing voluntary discomfort, we are training ourselves to be able to do that. And something remarkable happens when you do this. You find that there is less in the world that you need in order to be happy. But if you always indulge and you always follow your passions, what you will find is that there is never enough and you will never be fully satisfied because that is not where true contentment is found. And finally, you should end every day with a reckoning. 
In book three of his discourses, Epictetus writes, Let not slumber approach your weary eyes before reviewing all that you did during the day. Where did I go wrong? What did I do? What duty did I leave undone? After this beginning, run back over your actions, and then reproach yourself for things done badly and rejoice for things done well. Epictetus is giving us a way to hold ourselves accountable. He is suggesting that we do two things. One is that we actually review our actions in the day to see what went well and what didn't go well. And second, he's actually suggesting that we do this on a regular basis. We make a habit of it. In general, it is very hard to hold ourselves accountable unless we make time to hold ourselves accountable. It is not something that we often want to do. It is discomforting. It doesn't feel good. But by actually making time, you are allowing yourself to cultivate virtue, to pursue excellence, and to improve yourself. Now, oftentimes, you will end up with a long list of things that you did not do well, things you did wrongly, or things you left undone. The key here is not to wallow in shame, but instead to go get some rest and be ready to wake up the next day and do better.